Hey Siri, what's next? What's next is a live TV show which airs this morning at 10 a.m. on the Growing Boulder Facebook page. It stars the amazing Mark Middleton and that other guy, Bill. Bill something. Really? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Growing Boulder, watch this. Hello again, everybody. I'm Mark Middleton, and welcome back to What's Next. And let's start with a uh, a dose of reality, a moment of truth, if you will, because What's Next could very well be an interruption uh, in our live stream. Let's hope not, but consider this, because the number of Internet users has exploded uh, in the past month as the Internet truly has become the umbilical cord that we all use to stay connected to the outside world. And, and while YouTube and Netflix Netflix and, and FaceTime calls and video gaming and, and live streaming exactly like this have all exploded. Uh, you know, the real growth, the real spike in youth uh, in use uh, has been in the video conferencing uh, services like Zoom. Zoom now says it has 300 million daily participants. Uh, Google Meet is adding 3 million participants every single day. Microsoft Teams has seen a 70% increase. Cisco X says uh, a WebEx says it has 300 million participants every day. And of course, Facebook never wants to be left out of something that's happening online that it involves getting together. So it's now launching messenger rooms. And, and you know, when you think about it, this is not only how businesses are getting together, uh, it's how classrooms for schools are being held, weddings are being held like this, video gaming is being held like this, uh, workouts are being held like this. This is how everything is happening, and it's choking the internet. Uh, in fact, the download speeds now on average have been reduced over 40% in the last couple of weeks. YouTube said that it is now downgrading all of its videos globally from high definition to standard definition in order to reserve bandwidth. And, you know, all of that said, I think we've all got to really give a shout out uh, to the internet because it is holding up remarkably well. The infrastructure, I think, has amazed even the people that build it. In fact, many people have said that, that if this pandemic occurred 10 years ago, none of this would have been possible. Uh, all of this Zoom conferencing, uh, all of these classrooms, everything that's enabling people to continue working would not have been possible. So, you know, as bad as it is, as tragic as it is for people who have lost their jobs, many, many, many more would have lost their jobs were it not for what we're able to do right now. So, uh, you know, let's hear it for the internet. Uh, and it's great that we're we're still online and we're still, do, still doing well. So what's next today? Let's take a look at what we've got planned uh, over the next 30 minutes in today's show. Uh, you do not want to miss the Schaefer showdown as Bill and his uh, son Evan go uh, mano a mano on a pair of rollerblades. We're going to play for you what Bill and I think may be the best pandemic video, uh, pandemic video that we've seen. And, you know, we've all seen lots of them. We're going to take a trip in Mark's way back machine to, to meet a couple of uh, interesting fellows. Laura Savini is going to check in and tell us about COVID-inspired insomnia. Uh, she's an expert on getting to sleep, and Dr. Jim Smith Jr. is going to weigh in with a moment of truth. But first, let's give a shout out to another creative dad, because this is one of the things we love most about what's occurring. When his son's wagon broke and the stores were closed because of the lockdown, a guy by the name of Simon Brace built a four-car passenger train out of a riding lawnmower and three trash cans. He used the axles from the broken wagon and wheels from the garbage bins to make this seriously cool, successful DIY train. Way to go, Simon. All right, let's check back very quickly with uh, my buddy, my colleague, Mike Nanus, a.k.a. Mikey. Uh, Mikey is the guy that's directing the show. He pushes the buttons, and, and I'll be honest with you as you can probably tell by his mannerisms. Uh, Mikey is, is an unwilling participant in this segment. He'd prefer we just leave him out of it, but he's an interesting fellow. Uh, and why I wanted him here today uh, is because Mike and his wife, Debbie, who by the way is also a rock star video producer, uh, 
love to travel. It's really what they live for. So I've asked Mike to share with us a photo of one of their recent trips and a photo of where they think they're going to go when all of this is over. Because I think we all need this, Mike. We all need to dream about where we're going. So what have you got for us? Travel travel's a fun thing for us, Mark. We do it all the time when we can. We like to take big trips on occasion. The last time we took a big trip, we went to the sleepy little town of Tofino, which is in British Columbia. And it's about as far west as you can get in Canada. Population 1,932. It was part of a bigger trip to Vancouver and Whistler. We had a phenomenal time. Uh, can't say enough about that place. It's just when, when people ask, we like to share and we like to show. But, you know, with everything that we've been going through with the coronavirus, obviously it's it's tricky to travel right now. And we've already had some of our travel plans this year that we've had to adjust. But next year, you know, hoping all things get a little bit better for travel, we have this on our plate. We're looking at going to Switzerland. So if anybody's been to Switzerland and has super secrets that they want to share with me and or my wife, I'd love to know because we're going to be planning that soon. And we like to spend a lot of time planning it. So we got places to see when we get there. So that's what I got. Mikey, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, once again, a reminder, if anything goes wrong in today's show, it's either the internet or Mike Canis's <laughs> fault. Uh, all right, let, let's move on. <laughs> uh, you know, for now, we are all pretty much stuck at home. So you make uh, out of it what you can. And one of the things that we talk a lot about, you know, one of our mantras is move forward and give back, which is why we want to share this woman. We want to celebrate what she has done. This is Rachel Smith of Leesburg, Florida, 99 years old. And she has been working day after day for the past three weeks, sewing hundreds of masks for first responders and others in her community. So shout out to uh, Rachel Smith. Smith. We really appreciate it. And you got to love this guy, 99-year-old veteran Captain Tom Moore. He decided to raise money for Britain's underfunded National Health Service during the outbreak. He said, I'm going to walk a hundred times across the garden uh, in front of my house uh, using his walker, and I'm going to do it to raise money for the National Health Service. Uh, well, he did it. Uh, it took him six days to go back and forth a hundred times. He had a goal of raising $1,250, but as of this moment, he has raised over $33 million. And he just turned 100 yesterday. And take a look at how his nation, the UK, has responded, showing their love and affection for uh, the Captain Tom Moore. He has received literally hundreds of thousands of of birthday cards and well wishes from people all over the country. So uh, an amazing gesture uh, and an amazing guy making a difference at 100 years old. So uh, who do you know uh, that we should celebrate? Uh, what photos do you have of places that you would like to travel to? Post them in the comments below. Uh, help us give a shout out to people that deserve recognition and, and help us all dream about a cool place to go. Uh, and who knows, maybe we'll, we'll share those next week. Uh, all right, I'm going to rant for just a second if I can, because we see stories like we just shared, you know, every single day, seeing what these older men and older women are doing, how they're responding is really remarkable. Uh, it, it makes me proud, uh, but it also candidly makes me uh, a, a little bit angry. And, and here's why. There are a lot of people that don't see the value in and respect older people. And, you know, let, let's admit that racism and sexism are terrible evils. Uh, and, and so is ageism. In fact, it, it really is the most pervasive form of prejudice that there is because it impacts everybody, regardless of their gender, uh, their ethnicity, their religion, their disability. Uh, it is really, truly prejudice against our, our future selves. And, you know, one of the first things we learned about COVID-19 is, is that it, you know, primarily attacks older people or people with compromised uh, immune systems. They're the ones that are most susceptible to it. Uh, and a few weeks ago, there was a meme uh, that, that traveled widely across the internet with the tag boomer remover. And it was humorously referring to the fact that the mortality rate uh, is much higher among older people. And, you know, when medical supplies and everything, uh, you know, became uh, in critical shortage, hospitals were forced, you know, to, to get together and make these difficult ethical decisions about 
you know, who should be treated first and who should be denied treatment uh, in the face of a shortage of supplies. Uh, and when states began mandatory lockdowns, I won't mention the guy's name, but uh, the lieutenant governor of one of our larger states actually said, went so far as to suggest that older people, including himself, would volunteer to die uh, so that, quote, Americans don't lose our entire country. And, you know, I'll admit that many of us, myself included, have advanced directives uh, requesting that life-saving care be withheld under certain, certain circumstances, but I've never heard anybody of any age volunteer to die uh, so that our economy can get back to business one day sooner uh, th than, than it should. Uh, we all want to get back to work. We all want to get busy. It's very, very important, but it's critically important, uh, you know, that we do it in a way that respects everybody's health. Um, every life is precious, period. Every one of us counts, period. We live in the wealthiest country in the history of this world, a society uh, that questions the value of old people, black people, gay people, female people, any of that uh, is a society that's in decline. Uh, we got to figure out how we can provide everybody uh, the basic needs uh, and the care they need when they need it. Um, and, and let's be honest, this pandemic is something that every epidemiologist, every infectious disease specialist, every scientist has not only predicted, but all but guaranteed we would have uh, for the past decade. I mean, for goodness sakes, there, there's movies about it. There's, there's books written about it. Uh, we all knew it was coming and we were captured unprepared. Uh, and, and let's say no more about that. It doesn't make any difference why, but we are, and we all have to get together, uh, you know, to, to say and to acknowledge that we can never allow this to happen again. We have to value each and every person. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Let's bring Bill Schaefer back in because, uh, you know, Billy, sorry, not, not, not a great introduction to you, but, uh, you know, there you go. Not the first time in my life, Mark, I've been the after dinner mint in, in a conversation. But no, what you said, what you said is important and it's so relevant. And and the the way I'm trying to change, you know, when 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 everybody went into the lockdown and it's new for everybody and it's different and we're trying to figure out our new reality, we're all focused on ourselves, right? So now when the attention is going now to how we're gonna reopen, what the next steps are gonna be. This is the time, this is the opportunity to like blow the lid off and look down on ourselves from what do they say, the 30,000 feet view and see what it is that we need to learn, what the takeaways are from this. And man, you hit the nail on the head in what you said. And uh, are we gonna do that, that video now that you found that really does a great job of, of really putting all of this into perspective? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, Bill. And, and you know, I can't take credit for finding the video. Uh, you know, there's been thousands of videos, as we've said, and um, you know, this is one that, that that we like probably as much, if not more, than others. It was made by a a, a creative group out of Dublin. Uh, it's called Phoenix. It's it's three minutes long. So so please watch the whole thing because I think it is uh, the most uplifting and and also the most you know heartbreaking video that we've seen. But it ends with a very powerful message. So. Yeah, I say let's take a look at it, Mikey. She sleeps. Our world, she slumbers. Beneath the moon, the stars, the midnight sky. She sleeps, perchance, to dream. To her, Mr. Sandman goes. To us, he brings dreams. Fever dreams. In dreams, we remember what was. We think about what is. We imagine what might be, what can be, what will be. In dreams, we see those we love, those we have loved, those we will love. Do you think when this will all end, will we love more? Because when this will all end, we'll see things we could not imagine. We'll see heroes, jaded and bloody and exhausted and sick and tired and glittering and loved. We'll see entire nations come together to honour the bravery of those who showed up day after day, night after night to serve them. We'll see a world coming out of hibernation from behind screens, a world that will stop staring and start again on a life less ordinary. When this will all end, we'll see waterfalls, beaches, crocodiles, speeches. 
We'll see birds flying high, sun in the sky. And hey, Nina, we'll know how you feel with the new dawn, new day, new life. And damn, it'll feel good. And when this will all end, our hearts will have broken with millions of tiny shattered tears. But hearts are strong and they'll mend. And as they do, they'll soldier and soldier and grow and flourish and sow and flow with our souls together. And these souls will too be stronger because of this. And when this will all end, we will be reunited. So now, just for a minute, let's imagine it. The moment you'll hear that voice again. See that face again. Feel that embrace again. And we will embrace the old, the young, the family, the friends, the friendly rivals, the rival rivals, those you wouldn't have thought twice about touching before. And we will cry. Oh, we will cry. Fat, hot, wet tears will roll down our faces as we hold each other tight and for far too long. Because when this will all end, it won't feel right to ever let go again. And when this will all end, you'll ask me to dance and I will say, yeah, let's dance for the dawn of a new world, for those we love, for those we've lost, for another chance. And you'll put on your red shoes and dance my blues away. And as we sway, you'll look in my eyes at my soul, reviving, burning, arising. And those fat, hot, wet tears will fall and we will never, ever forget it. And we will never, ever let go again. And this, this will all end. Awesome. Yeah, the creative work of, of Tenth Man. And, uh, you know, thank you for, you know, enduring it, uh, enabling us, allowing us to share that, because I think the message is really good. And, you know, I think the message is, uh, you know, we are all more vulnerable, more fragile and, and more connected than we know. And we talked about this too, Mark. This has been a once in a lot, I hope once in a lifetime opportunity for us to have a time out in life, to sit back and think to ourselves, who are we? What do we want to be? What should we be doing? How do we connect? It goes right back to what you were saying before. We've got to take this experience and not just as something that we kind of went through and then we forget about as soon as we get back to work, but something that makes us better, something that makes us grateful, makes us appreciate everything that we have because we've sort of seen hints of how quickly it can be taken away. Amen, Brother Bill. We certainly uh, aren't pretending that we have any of the answers, but but we all have to start asking the right questions. And, you know, as we move forward, you know, one of the things that Bill and I say all the time is if you want to keep moving, you have to keep moving. And, and this guy's a pretty good example of that. This is a, a Frenchman on his small balcony who decided just because he had nothing else to do that he wanted to run a marathon on his balcony 20 feet across three feet wide back and forth he went for seven hours until he ran a marathon bill where there's a will there's a way i know i think this guy's nuts i go out and i go up in the backyard and i'll walk circles around the yard and the neighbors look at me like i have lost my mind but it's a fantastic example of if there's something you want to do Who's going to stop you? How can you be stopped with a little creativity and a little bit of, you know, a little bit of drive and desire and a sense of humor behind everything we do? We can find ways to do anything, right, Mark? He did 26 miles in like seven hours. <laughs> he did do that. And, 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 you know, last week, Bill, we mentioned you uh, and your son, Evan. Uh, you mentioned a sense of humor. I have no idea if you were trying to... Uh, have us laugh at you, should I say, when you did this? But, you know, Bill's a, Bill's a skater. Uh, Evan inherited his ability to skate from Bill. So tell us what we're doing here, Billy. Yeah, he actually got the good part of the talent from his mom, fortunately. But yeah, so he's been talking smack to me, right? And us people who are of age and experience, we don't have to take that smack. So we decided that we were going to have uh, an event called the Intergenerational Inline Skating Speed Trap Challenge to see who <laughs> could get the highest reading from the speed trap. And, you know, I thought I smoked them, but I didn't even go fast enough, Mark, to make the sign show up. At least my son, look at him fly down here. He ends up going 24 miles an hour. 
And he looks like he looks like Bill. He knows he's not going to fall because he's got no protective gear. But but now look at look at you. I'm blazing. I'm going twice as fast as he did. Look at that. There's there's no there's something wrong with that sign. And Mark, do you know how many women who went by slowed down, rolled down their car windows, and they'd say, "I knew they liked me." They'd say something like, "Wow." You're some skater. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so the point of the whole thing is, you know, be creative. Uh, step out of your comfort zone. Try something different. Make up your activities. Make up your games. And and, and turn, turn this into, my wife said this, great. We talked about this last week, Mark. It's a chance for all of us to reconnect. Don't let it go by without reconnecting. And if we want to move... If we want to figure out a way to do something, there really are no excuses because, Bill, it, it doesn't take much, right? Yeah. If, if you're wondering if it can make a difference, the answer is an absolute yes. Even if all you decide to do is just walk. You want to see what a difference that can make? Take a look at what it did for a woman named Heather Quillen. How much did you weigh here? I weighed 278 pounds. That's incredible. Yeah. Heather Quillen says all you need is a decent pair of shoes. It makes a huge difference. It is amazing. I mean, if there's like nothing else you could do, walking would be it. I, I mean, for me, because it really does have the cardio component. It's not hard on your joints and it has profound benefits. And everything else branched out from that. And everything else branched out from that. I'm just power walking. It's part of your lifestyle. It is absolutely part of my lifestyle. And that's and that's the that's the key. Yeah. And you know what? It's only like 20 minutes. It's not like an hour and a half or two hours. And you know what I do? I will go twice a day. But it's for 20 minutes. It's not an hour and a half. It's 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night. Isn't that amazing? So yeah. those stories can happen. Mark, she lost the weight. She feels she feels better. She feels happier, more active. And she says the key is don't overthink what you're going to do. Just get up and start moving. Because if you want to, you can even invent your own event like the guy walking the balcony or like Bill and Evan did. Yeah, all it takes is a little bit of desire. All right, we're going to take a quick trip in, in Mark's Wayback Machine. And, you know, here's a little trivia thing. I don't know whether any of you folks know this or really care about it, but Bill Schaefer and I uh, were both sports anchors and news anchors at different times in our career. In fact, at one time, we, we switched jobs. Um, I covered the Olympics for NBC News Channel and, and Hearst Television uh, from 1992 in Barcelona to 2004 in Athens. So I was always, my antenna was up when I heard Heard about anything that had to do with the Olympics. And one day I was notified that a couple of guys not too far from where I lived uh, were going to start a new Olympic sport. And of course, I was intrigued uh, and later I was amused. Uh, take a look at, our, at, at this story from our Wayback Machine. So I think we should roll with it like Larry Cuminato and Marty Bacon are visionaries, two men on a mission. They have less than 60 days to convince every nation in the world that oil wrestling should be in the 1996 Olympics. I don't know what the actual chance is. I figure it's a 50-50 shot. We never thought it would come to this magnitude. But it has. Athletes are flocking to Ocala for a chance to realize their Olympic dream. I'm just real nervous. I mean, it's hard. You just got to keep going. I mean, I just, you know, I just want to go out there and do my best. Well, I haven't been in it too long. I mean, it's about two weeks, about a week or so like that. And he's a veteran. So maybe the people should see things like this to get some exciting. Mary and Marty have studied oil wrestling for years. Research that's resulted in several revelations. It's really hard to pin somebody down. It makes it much harder to, to compete. And most importantly. It. Well, it don't have to be, you know, talented or anything like that. The secret, oil and lots of it. Oh, yeah. The rules are complex, but they can be learned. You no know, biting, scratching, kick, kicking or pinching. What do you feel now that you know this could become an Olympic sport? Um, I guess happy because I believe in excitement. And it's definitely exciting. I feel like I want to win. Let's oil wrestle. This sport has Olympic written all over it. Two fine athletes battling for the glory of their country. But with less than 60 days to go, how can we put together our team? 
Uh, well, they would contact me for right now, and I could do all the Olympic tryouts from all over the country. They could come here. Once they get here, there'll be plenty to do. You gotta have coaches. I mean, I mean, you just gotta like figure out moves and stuff. But that shouldn't take long. All it is is just getting some wrestlers together and do, and learning how to do it with oil. If this does become an Olympic sport, uh, I mean, what we're gonna see today uh, are possibly some Olympic champions. Uh, very well, possibly. And I think that it would be uh, much better for for young girls and young guys. To, to grow up and want to do that, want to be a, a world-class oil wrestler. I think it'd be all right. I mean, both male and female can contis uh, participate. If you do reach your goal and you make this an Olympic sport, I mean, you could be the father of international Olympic oil wrestling. I mean, that, that's something to say. I'll be in total awe. You know, I, I hope that that does happen. Now it's up to the nations of the world. Marty's challenge is clear. Let's oil wrestle! Bill, surprising, <laughs> surprisingly, they did not convince every nation in the world. They did not host the trials. And to this day, uh, oil wrestling, wrestling is not an Olympic sport. I have no idea how that did not catch on. I mean, it just <laughs> seems like, you know, it's something that the early Romans had done, right, with the, uh, with the invention of oil. But you know what will catch on, Mark? And you know what's getting more and more popular with every issue is Growing Boulder magazine. This is one of the coolest periodicals out there, folks, and for real. And look at this thing. This thing is over 100 pages filled with inspiring stories on people like you've seen in the program today and more. Um, the, the, there are tools and resources in here to help you live a better life, and it really is something that you should consider adding to help you remember to start growing bolder in your own life. And you know how you find it? You go to growingbolder.com, which happens to be, it's the Disney world of inspiration. In their stories, their interviews with celebrities, with ordinary people living extraordinary lives. There's all sorts of things related to COVID there as well. You need to go to grow, do yourself a favor. If you go to one website ever, go to growingbolder.com check it out, subscribe to the magazine if you want to, show your pride in a Growing Boulder t-shirt, but enjoy what's there. Inspire yourself to live the life you know you always wanted to, and that's at growingbolder.com. All right, folks, and now the highlight of the show. <clears throat> if you've stayed around this long, uh, you know, this is really when it gets fun and interesting because we bring in our colleague uh, and friend, Laura Savini, from her home in New York. Uh, Laura is a well, uh, well-known, beloved host in public broadcasting, among other things. She's a producer and, uh, you know, a really interesting woman. Laura, how are you doing today? We're doing all right. You know, we are in the hot spot. And, um, you know, somebody was telling me last night, my sister was saying, you know, in some states, it's not real. It's real in New York. Coronavirus yeah. is real. Yeah. Amen. So uh, I know because I've known you for a while that you have a history of having trouble getting to sleep. And, you know, this is a very real deal now, folks. We all have so much anxiety. I think I woke up 10 times last night. Uh, so give us some tips, Laura, because you're an expert. What can we do to overcome COVID induced insomnia? Well, it's true. We do have anxiety, whether we're worried about our jobs, we're worried about uh, our kids learning online, or we're worried about my, I have a niece who's on the front lines in New York City Hospital. It, we have a lot of anxiety. And if you don't sleep, Mark, it actually lowers your immune system. And now is the time when you need a good immune system. So I find I'm waking up at two o'clock in the morning. I'm awake from like two to four and it's, it's really terrible. So I had to come up with some systems of what uh, would help me fall asleep and stay asleep. So one of the things is you need darkness. You have to have darkness. So I am the master of masks. I have every kind you can imagine, beautiful spa, silky ones and pink ones. And but the one I found out that works the best it's silly. It looks like a bra, right? I mean, it totally looks like a bra, but <laughs> it makes complete darkness. You don't get any any dark, any dark, light slipping in. Only problem, a little bit of Velcro in the back that gets caught in the hair, but we can live with that if we can sleep well. Um, and then the other thing I have determined is that you really need to find a good podcast, one that's not too interesting, but one that's interesting enough and where there's not too much noise and uh, a lot of sound effects, something that just allows you to 
listen and hear the voice that soothes you and puts you to sleep. Um, and uh, if you're sleeping by yourself, you just have your Google or your Amazon, put it on, put your sleep timer on and you're set. If you have somebody in the room with you, earbuds, one earbud so you can roll over and not get hurt. So those are uh, how I've figured out how to really get a good night's sleep is having that podcast on just to help you go to sleep. Sometimes you have to listen to it three or four times before you actually hear the whole podcast. And I have curated a list for you of podcasts that I have found are really good ones to help you fall asleep. Side Door, this is from the Smithsonian Institution. Uh, fantastic. It's uh, They base it on their uh, exhibits and they have 154 million things in their museum. Uh, so it's a mix of biologists and artists and historians and zookeepers getting together to tell stories. 99% of in Invisible, Roman Mars, great voice. And he does a fabulous job of explaining how design and architecture work in our life. And actually, Rachel Smith, from your story earlier, who made the masks, she'd love to hear the most recent episode on how the mask was invented and designed and how it works. The Splendid Table or Salt and Spine, two of my favorites. We're all home, we're cooking, we're, we wanna be a little bit more adventurous in the kitchen. These two shows will be great for you to listen to, to learn about spices and talk to hear about chefs. And it's just really fun. Those are two of my favorites. And then Sleep With Me, Pure Silly. It's just silly. It's a, it's a man with a very droning voice who tells ridiculous stories that you can't follow until you eventually fall asleep. So those are my picks for helping you fall asleep if you are having corona-induced anxiety, sleeplessness. Uh, you know, that, that really is amazing. I'm not sure that if that last guy is going to be proud to have made your list for the reason that he made it, but, uh, you know, that, that's really good. Billy Schaefer, do you have trouble getting to sleep? You know, it's funny. I never have had trouble until we've been stuck at home. And I, and I don't, in my head, I'm not conscious of more stress. But Laura, I was going to ask you, that's a great question, Mark. Is it worse for you now? I know you've had this for a long time. Is it worse now? It is actually because, um, you know, our, our schedules are disrupted and I have a lot more to worry about. So many of us, I mean, I've lost people. I know people who are sick and I take care of people who are at risk. And I just, you know, you worry. So for me, it's a lot of anxiety at night. I wake up going, do I have it? Do I have it? You know, and that's, I think I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who's experiencing that. And, you know, Mark, Mark over here, he, he gets up at four in the morning any on the weekends for fun. That's why I can he, call you. I, he, he, call you I mean, he's out up. exercising by five, you know, so, so yeah, there's Good so many you. different habits that people have. Mark, have, have you had trouble too? Uh, every, every night now. Yeah. It, it's a curse and a blessing. Um, and, and when I wake up, you know, I, I am always dreaming. Uh, and now I remember my dreams and it, they are always work related, uh, you know, which will give you an idea of the anxiety. Well, and I apologize for causing that stress. <laughs> hey, hey, Laura, stick around because we're, we're going to put this thing in the garage uh, in just a moment. But uh, let's take a look at uh, the Growing Builder meme stream, if we can. Uh, our meme of the day is an old Chinese proverb that says, when the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. And, you know, in other words, don't fight change. Uh, embrace it. And more than that, harness it. Use it to power what's next in your life because uh, the truth of the matter is change is the only constant and fighting it is a losing battle. And Bill, you know, uh, a guy who knows more about fighting change, not only fighting change, but creating change is, is our buddy, Dr. Jim. You know, you said, you said you hit the nail on the head there. It's not just change. It's creating change because if we're going to sit back and wait for everybody else to recognize what us older people have to offer is never going to happen. So as Mark said, growing bolder contributor and motivational speaker is an amazing guy. He was on the program with us last week, this week as well. Dr. Jim Smith Jr. You know what he says? He says you can't sit around and wait for the change. He says you've got to be the change. I would love for us to start a revolution about how we should age. Revolution. More than books, more than magazines, more than movies where we shift the culture, we shift the, the landscape. <sighs> We're getting better. Other, other countries, you know, love their elderly, revere their elderly. We, we put our elderly in homes. <laughs> you played enough. You've made enough. Have a seat right here, Uncle Jim, right here. Now watch the party. What?
I'm going to be the party. Are you kidding me? You're embarrassing me. So I'm not embarrassing me. So I'm embarrassing you. I'm having a good time without alcohol. And you're telling me to stop. Really? Come act my age then. And that's what I believe the Growing Boulder mission is. And I think it's an incredible mission. And I think the mission should go into revolution, to go into movement and, and change the way we age, we grow. I love it. I hope to be growing bolder. I believe I'm going to be growing bolder for the rest of my life. He's a great guy. We are so proud to have him as part of their team, as we are to have Laura Savini. And Mikey, bring Laura back in because, um, you know, Laura, if you don't want me to mention who you're married to, I won't. Uh, is that okay? You can mention it. Uh, Laura is married to Jimmy Webb, who is a Grammy Award winning uh, producer, songwriter, uh, you know, a little bit of everything. And forgive me, forgive me if I if I get that wrong. The reason I wanted to bring her in is because uh, we're going to show you a short video. You know, one of the cool things, Billy uh, and Laura, about uh, the pandemic is, is what we're calling lockdown music. We are, you know, getting the rare treat of, of, of seeing some very intimate moments. Yeah, and that's true too, Mark. And it's and what Jim Smith, one of the points he was making is we don't want to we don't want to necessarily separate older people out from everybody else yeah. because it works best when you're in line skating with your kid or when you're singing with your daughter. Right, Laura? Th that's when the magic really seems to happen. And we've actually had Jimmy go live a couple of times on FaceTime um, with some uplifting words uh, to talk to his fans to get them through this and play some songs. And and it is, there is something very intimate about this time because we are sharing our homes. Look at us right now. We're in our homes. You never see this in reality. So it's been kind of fun for uh, for Jimmy to play his songs from his piano in his living room. And it, it really is a very interesting time for entertainment because we have to reinvent it. Like your last guest was just saying, we have to figure out how to make all this work. And when you break entertainment down to the essence of what it really is, Jimmy knows this better than anybody. And folks, Google this guy because <laughs> Jimmy Webb is one of the most influential people in the history of music. But this is a song we're about to show you that, that we have found that you will recognize, that you will know. And it's broken down with no production, with no, you know, with no, no tools at all. Just two people, two different age groups, guitars, and just human emotion. Right, Mark? Yeah, it, it is, uh, you know, it's Tears for Fears. It was written and recorded 40 years ago by Kurt Smith. Uh, and this is Kurt playing with his teenage daughter, Diva. Uh, and it's a song that uh, resonates and we can relate to as much today as, as when it was first recorded 40 years ago. Let's listen. familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces, threatened early for their daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere, and their tears are filling up their glasses, no expression, no expression. Have my head, I want to drown my sorrow. No tomorrow, no tomorrow. And I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. I find it hard to tell you cause I find it hard to take When people run in circles it's a very, very mad world It is indeed a mad, mad world these days. And, and how about Diva? I mean, the, the, the harmony, and again, you guys know more about music than I do, but the vocal harmonies of people that are related sometimes are, are, are just amazing. Absolutely. I had chills the whole time when she started singing. It's it's gorgeous. Hear the way their voices blend so perfectly. And how that's a song, what, 30 years later, still is so 
spot on. A good it, song is a good song. It's even better, don't you think, Laura? Yeah. I mean, just scale down acoustic to guitars, mm -hmm. to people. And it's, can you imagine how they feel performing it together? If we can feel the same thing, something magical about music like that. And, and I hope things move back to the Jimmy Webb type sound and, <laughs> and uh, an, an acoustic where, where melody and lyrics mean everything. Mm, I'm yeah. with you on that. <laughs> yeah, many people who have watched that have commented that they thought that they were watching a studio musician perform with Kurt. Uh, you know, uh, remember the name Diva because I think she's going to be big. Hey, Laura, this has been fun. I hope you continue to play with us as we do this. And <laughs> uh, I think everybody wonders what's next. Uh, but you know, what's next is the rest of the day, folks. And then what's next is tomorrow. Um, because that's really all we have. You know, we, we just have right, you know, Bill, have we thought about changing the name of the show from what's next to right now? What's next to right now? Let's see, What wasn't it about like 17 days ago you had the idea to do the show in the first place and we did one like five days later? So you know what, maybe we should change it to anything's possible. Oh, I like it. I, I like that, <laughs> or it could become uh, Laura and Friends. Growing. Yeah.